If you haven't watched my previous video on this topic, then I highly suggest that you watch that one before watching this one because this one only focuses on some advanced tips and techniques that you can do to reduce your render time further. So let's get started. If you're using Blender 2.83 or above, then there is a new feature called Adaptive Sampling. Let me show you what it does and then we'll show you how to use it in your renders. In this scene, as you can see, the ground doesn't even have any noises, but the monkey is full of noise. Now if you try to reduce noise, you would increase the total number of samples, but doing so you are also increasing the sample amount in the ground, which is kind of a waste of resources. That's when adaptive sampling come in handy. So what it does is it reduces the sample amount on the places where there is almost no noise and only increases it in the noisiest part of the image, thus giving you a total boost in your render time. It might not reduce your render time quite a lot in some situations but you should always turn it on because it doesn't affect your performance. Now the next thing that you can do is playing with caustic settings. Now there are two types of caustics in Blender. Reflective caustics and refractive caustics. These are needed in your render to make it look more realistic. However, if you can get by not using caustics, then you can turn this off. In this scene, we got a green transparent ball made of glass. And you can see when the refractive caustic is turned on, we are having a lot of light passing through the ball and on the surface. But it also creates a lot of noise. On the flip side, turning it off will save you some render time, but you can't see the caustic, thus giving you not so realistic render. Now for the reflective caustics, I've opened this scene. Here's the ground is a metallic surface with green base color. Now if you turn reflective caustics off, you can see the light hitting the metal surface below the ball is not reflecting on the sphere. This creating a darker shadow area under the sphere, but turning it on will give you the reflective caustic and more realistic lighting. So if you can get by not using these settings, you can turn them off and it will make your render time shorter. Now the next thing that you can do is clamping values. What does clamping does then? Well, uh, it clamps the light intensities above a given value. Let me, let me show you how it works. It's really simple to understand. Let me use the thermal vision mode to demonstrate. As you can see, the more orangish or reddish or whitish the color, the more light is hitting the surface and more bluish or blackish the color, the less light is hitting the surface. We have a point light here. So you can see right below the point light, the area is kind of oranges and gradually fades into gray and then to blue. If I use filmic color, you can see that the light is gradually fading away into the darkness. That's how light works in real life. Now, if you set the direct clamp value to one, then any direct light intensity, that means the light coming directly from the point light to the surface, which has an intensity above one, is gonna be clamped into one. Now you can see that the orange portion and the, I mean the red portion on the middle is not there. And now if I go to the filmic color, you can see that the hot spot that light was creating is not there anymore. If I clamp the value to point two, then it clamps all the value above point two, as you can see, and it can create a little bit unrealistic render. But if, if you have a hot spot on your scene that is creating a lot of noise, which is coming directly from a light source, then you can clamp the value and it will make the noise go away. Now coming on to the indirect clamp, it's basically the same thing, but for indirect lighting, it means that uh, the light after hitting a surface, then bouncing off, I mean, see here the light hitting the side of the monkey is creating a lot of noise, which is obviously a bounced light, means indirect light. And if, you, if I set the cl indirect clamp to one, then the light hitting the side of the monkey becomes a little bit dull, but it also reduces the noise that was present there. So you can use this method to also reduce your render time. If you don't care about the highlight on those surfaces, then you can reduce your render time by using the clamping those values. And if you wanted to turn off the clamping, you can set both of these values to zero and it will, it will not clamp any values. Now the next thing that you can do is to use the AO bounces option in the simplify tab in render settings. This option is like the light path settings, but it works kind of differently. By default, this value should be set to zero. And if you turn it uh, up something like four and three, 
you're gonna get uh, comparable result but it'll reduce your render time quite a lot however reducing it too much to about something like one or two will make it make your scene look too dark and you're not gonna have any kind of ambient lighting so if you don't need that much of ambient lighting you can turn this to one and your render time would be much faster if you're rendering an interior scene and you're using glasses on your windows you're inviting a lot of noises Here you can see removing the window gives you much less noises however you wouldn't get that sweet reflection on the window if you don't have glasses but there's a quick fix for this just select the windows glass object and go to the objects panel and scroll down to the ray visibility tab and uncheck all of these except the camera and transmission checking the camera will make the glass visible to the camera thus we can see the reflection in the render and we check transmission so that you can see through the glass if uncheck transmission we can't see the def i mean you can't see, see this this glitch will happen so just make sure that you check the transmission coming up next is using portals in your interior render when you're using a single hdri to light up your interior it's better to use a portal it basically tells blender that this is the this is a window and light is only coming through this to fill fill up the interior so i mean shut up so how to use a portal then just add a real light and move it where the window is roughly in your scene and then scale it so that it covers the whole window then just check the portal checkbox in the area light properties and boom you can see the render looks less noisy however it also increases the render time slightly but it doesn't mean you shouldn't use it it makes the render look much less noisy than just increasing the sample count and gonna save you a lot of time however uh, also just remember that the you make sure your area light is pointing inside the window and not outside so yeah now the next two tips are for post processing kind of stuff like compositing stuff if you're using let's say motion blur and depth of field then this tip is going to help you a lot so first is using using the vector blur node if you have used motion blur in your scene you might have noticed that to get a clean motion blur render you need a lot of samples but increasing sample will increase your render time quite a lot so here you can see motion blur using the default method just by checking that checking that motion blur box and the vector blur method it is uh, it is only using eight samples by the way there's no denoise filter whatsoever so to fake motion blur turn motion blur off in your render settings then you need to go into the view layers properties and then under passes tick the vector pass now I'm gonna split the window and open up the compositor to make and just make sure that you turn on use nodes if you can't see nodes. Now press shift A, go to filter, add a fil vector blur, then plug the image into the image, the depth into the Z or Z and vector into speed. Now connect the image output to the composite image input and now give it a render. I'm gonna use something like 0.1 because it's obviously too much and uh, if you see some ghosting artifact in your render then increasing the sample to something like 64 might help but it's gonna you know, increase render time though however this motion blur is not as accurate as the cycles uh, default motion blur as you can see here the reflection of the ball is also blurred which is not which doesn't happen in real life with real cameras but if your scene doesn't need this accuracy then you can do this method and it will save you a lot of render time coming up next is faking the depth of field using depth of field and to get those clear and clean bokeh effects you need a lot of samples which obviously gonna increase your render time so to get fake depth of field just open up the compositing tab and add in a defocus node which should be in the filters tab then plug the image into the image the depth to the z or z and plug the output also I'm gonna increase the max blur to 32 and Z scale to 5 also make sure to turn off the depth of field option in the camera settings before doing any of these okay now give it a render 
and as you can see the image is not properly focused so you need to change the focus distance so to do so I'm gonna add a color ramp node then plug it here then click this plus button to add another slider and make it pure black then select the left slider and make it pure white now to view the focus plane I'm gonna plug the output of the color ramp to the composite input and you can, as you can see that we have a black strip going in our render and this strip represents the focus plane also I'm gonna add a normalize node here and if I now just tweak the middle slider I can see the focus plane just changing and also you can animate this value to do the focus in and out of focusing out or some kind of cool stuff but I'm just gonna keep it like this now, now let's plug the defocus output to the composite node and boom you can see we have depth of field and it doesn't even have any noises so now if you want to increase the depth of field amount you can increase the Z scale value and if you want to increase the max blur size then just increase that max blur size however increasing the max blur size too much can increase your render time quite a lot so just play with the settings until you're quite fine with the result also if you wanted to use vector based motion blur with the fake depth of field at the same time then first do the depth of field thing in the composite tab and after you're done with tweaking the depth of field then add the vector blur and then plug the image output of the defocus node to the image input of the vector blur then plug this depth output to the z and the vector to the speed then play with the settings as you like and that's how we get the depth of field and motion blur at the same time using just the compositing node so yeah it's gonna reduce your render time much further I guess after doing all this step still if you're having a lot of render time then maybe you should use EV engine uh, it is a real-time engine so it's gonna reduce your render time quite a lot it is not easy to get a realistic render in EV so in the next video I'm gonna show you how to make your scene look good in EV here is an example of the this interior scene that I made and I converted it from EV I mean converted it from cycles into EV and you can see it works in real time so see you guys in the next video and also if I miss some settings then please leave them in the comments below that would be appreciated so yeah seeing you guys in the next one